It's a very long way from Australia and New Zealand to the UK and Europe. And so that means there's very long flights. And that means you can either do it all in one and feel pretty terrible at the end, or you can take a stopover, and that's what we choose to do. Um, we can stop over in places like Singapore, Dubai, Hong Kong, maybe um, uh, Abu Dhabi. But we, this time we have chosen to take a stopover in Dubai. And it's a lovely place and, it's, and we're staying at the um, uh, Premier Inn International right by the airport. And it's very convenient with a shuttle. Taking a stopover means that you can have a quick look around the place, be refreshed when you take your next long journey. So after a 14 hour flight from Melbourne to Dubai, Here's what happened when we had a little stopover. Maybe you can have a stopover too, rather than taking a big long trip. Stopovers are great. There are lots of things you can do on a stopover in Dubai, but perhaps the three main ones would be do a city tour, go for a uh, dinner cruise in a Dow, and then do a desert safari. So we'll show you what it's like on these kind of activities. Tonight we're going on a Dow dinner cruise on Dubai Creek. Interesting food, worth having a go. We're going to do a city tour of Dubai starting at the museum so we can learn about the history of this incredible place. Before 1960, the uh, people of the Emirates were desert people. This is a typical house, air conditioning on the top there. There's the well and lots of helpers to draw the water. In the early days they were primarily fishing people. That's before oil was discovered. Very much a Bedouin lifestyle so camel is very very important. And of course they're great traders. There's the spices. The men dress in white because it's hot outside and the women dress in black because they work on the inside. So this is what Dubai was like in the 1930s. Just a small trading village. But then they discovered oil, and the rest is history. Such growth and such development, it's almost unbelievable.
this is Dubai Creek and in uh, 1970 that's really all it was, a creek. In the 1960s they discovered oil and that led to development here so that now we have the bustling city of Dubai. Trade still takes place here, of course, but mainly it's the tourist trade. We're now going into the souk in Deira, Old Dubai. Uh, souk is a market, very much part of the way of life here in the market to trade. And look at the clothes, aren't they beautiful? All sorts of different spices in the spice market. Every possible spice is sold here and we're just going to have a little um, demonstration about the different ones are. Lots of them we wouldn't even recognise. So this looks like a stone. Stone chocolate. Chocolate. It's, yes. Look at that. Wow. One more. One more. Oh. Okay. Different flavour or all the same? No problem. All the same. But just different colour. Natural cayenne? Frankincense. Yes, frankincense. Frankincense. Saffron. This rose, pomegranate. Which one? Pomegranate. Flower. This is urban curry. Do you use the monopoly? Now we're in the gold souk. And the gold work is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this is the biggest ring in the world, 58 kg. Maybe. Beautiful, and it's got a Guinness World Record associated with it. They're just shop after shop after shop with beautiful gold like this. Nice little necklace there. Normally everything that glitters is not gold, but here everything that glitters is indeed gold. Even a dress, look at that. Do you for a nice little birthday present? Imagine how heavy that would be to wear. There isn't bargaining because the rate is set and uh, it's displayed in every shop. Well, it's been really lovely coming to the spice market and the gold market, the souk. Uh, a real different way of life to what we're used to for shopping but fantastic. Here we have Jumeirah Open Beach. It's very hot today and yet people are out sunbathing. And there's the Burj Al Arab Hotel shaped like a sail. Burj means tower. And then there's the Jumeirah Beach Hotel over there which is shaped like a wave. The Burj Al Arab is uh, the most expensive hotel in the world, somewhere between $3,000 a night and $30,000 a night. And you probably get a free breakfast for that. Here we have the famous Jumeirah Mosque, a very open mosque, open to all people from all countries. We are going to enter the Palm Jumeirah. It's the man-made island. They call this the Golden Mile. Wonder why. 
It's the first building opened 2008, the rest all opened 2011. That's the Dubai frame. One way you see old Dubai, the other way you see new Dubai. Latest attraction. But perhaps this is what Dubai is most famous for. It's big buildings. This one's 82 stories high and Tom Cruise jumped out of the top there, straight out the window in Mission Impossible. Everywhere you look, you're surrounded by incredible luxury in all of these big buildings. Very nice. And this is the famous Dubai Mall, which is actually quite big. Inside, there's a fairly impressive waterfall. And in the middle of the mall, there's a nice skating rink. Not bad for in the middle of the desert. Yep, 37, 38 degrees outside. This thing's pretty uh, attractive, actually. And it's even got an aquarium. Massive one. And you can go and swim with all the fish if you want to. You can buy anything here. Our city tour today has been provided by Royal Adventure travels and tours and it's been fantastic so I want to thank you sir for most, showing us most around. Welcome, most welcome. It's incredible to think that none of this was here just 60 odd years ago in the early 1960s and yet once they discovered oil and had the money they've created this incredible incredible environment. It's been a real privilege for us to visit so thank you Dubai uh, we've enjoyed coming to spend our um, short stop over here with you.